For years, the US Navy has had a clear technological advantage over its adversaries in the area of guns that utilize explosives to fire projectiles. But as time goes on, conventional projectiles will eventually be replaced by directed energy weapons. One of these is the railgun which took the Navy over 15 years and $500 million to develop. And that's exactly what we're talking about in today's video. Intensive work on research into railgun technology began back in the 1980s, when the Ballistic Research Laboratory, which later merged into the US Army Research Laboratory, announced the start of a long-term program for theoretical and experimental research on railguns. The work was mainly carried out at the Aberdeen Proving Ground, and most of the early experiments were inspired by the legacy of scientists from the Australian National University. In 1984, with the formation of the Strategic Defense Initiative, research goals shifted towards building a constellation of satellites to intercept ICBMs, leading the US military to focus on developing small guided missiles capable of withstanding high G-force launches from high-velocity plasma-armored railguns. However, just a year later, an important Defense Science Council study was published, after which the US Army, Marine Corps, and DARPA were instructed to develop anti-tank electromagnetic launching technologies for mobile ground vehicles. Since 2005, the US Navy has been developing the EMRG, Electromagnetic Railgun, a gun that uses electricity instead of powder charges to fire projectiles. Gunpowder, in principle, has long been the preferred fuel for launching projectiles from weapons, but it has three main limitations. It makes the cartridge noticeably heavier. Black powder ammunition is extremely explosive, so it needs to be stored and transported as carefully as possible. And finally, the muzzle velocity of the projectiles driven by gunpowder is about 4,000 FPS. But the way to overcome all these shortcomings is the electromagnetic railgun. Using an electrically powered magnetic field, it's able to propel a projectile up to a whopping 52,493 feet per second. The railgun consists of a large electrical circuit, including a power source, a pair of parallel rails, and moving armature. Let's take a look at each of these. The power source, an electrical current often calculated in millions of amer. The rails are lengths of conductive metal such as copper that can vary in length from 4 to 30 feet. The armature covers the gap between the rails and is represented by a solid piece of conductive metal or a conductive shoe, a holder in which the projectile itself is located. Some railguns use a type of plasma armature, where thin metal foil is placed on the back of a non-conductive projectile. Thus, when the energy passing through this foil evaporates, it becomes a current-carrying plasma. An electrical current flows from the positive terminal of the power source up to the positive rail, through the armature, and down the negative rail back to the power supply. The current that's flowing through the wire creates a magnetic field around it, an area in which there's a magnetic force with both magnitude and direction. In a railgun, parallel rails, in turn, play the role of a wire, and a magnetic field circulates around each of these. The magnetic field lines run in a counterclockwise circle around the positive rail, and in a clockwise circle around the negative rail. In this case, the total magnetic field between the rails is directed vertically. In parallel with the charged wire in the electric field, the Lorentz force acts on the projectile, directed perpendicular to the magnetic field and the direction of the current that's flowing through the armature. The Lorentz force works parallel to the rails and away from the power source. Its value is determined by the level F equals ILB, where F is the net force, I is the current, L is the length of the rails, B is the magnetic field. The force can be increased by lengthening the rails or by increasing the current. However, long rails can create design problems, so most railguns use high current, in the order of millions of amps, to create a huge output force. So the projectile under the action of the Lorentz force accelerates to the end of the rails, opposite to the power source, and flies out through the aperture. After that, the circuit breaks and the current suddenly stops. Technically, a railgun could be an amazing solution not only for long-range shooting, but also for close-range shooting. Among those who have most actively promoted the idea of developing the railgun in the US, one can certainly single out General Atomics, which introduced a ground-based version of this weapon called the Blitzer in 2013, and Bay Systems, which supplied the US Navy with a 32MJ prototype back in 2007. 
The latter had been tested by 2010, when the US Naval Research Administration set a world record by firing a shot with a power of 33 MJ. Unfortunately, as in the case with any futuristic idea, there were some problems encountered, and the engineers had to face the main problem railguns bring. Since railguns require huge current to fire projectiles at Mach 5 or more, this had become a bottleneck for traditional American battleships. After all, the power required for a railgun cannot be separated from the propulsion system of the ship itself. The American CG-47 cruisers or DDG-51 destroyers simply don't have sufficient power generation even for the previously mentioned 32MJ setup, which requires a minimum of 15MW, and even better, 30MW of onboard power. More advanced railguns with a capacity of 64MJ or higher are even worse, requiring ships to supply power of in the amount of 40MW, 50MW, or even more. Only ships of the new Zumwalt or DDX generations would be able to provide such power, generating up to 78 MW, of which the ship itself needs about 20 MW for stable operation. To fire a railgun projectile from on board such a ship, engine power would be applied to the gun turret, allowing the weapon to fire up to 6 rounds per minute for as long as needed, after which the power would be fed back to the ship's engine. Among the other cons, also worth mentioning, are the following. Recoil force. The rails must withstand the enormous recoil force due to the projectile's colossal muzzle velocity. The current in each of the weapon's rails flows in opposite directions creating a strong pushing force that attempts to pull the rails apart, creating an arc and causing rapid evaporation and extensive damage to the rail and insulator surfaces. Admiral Matthew Clunder had claimed in 2014 that the railgun barrel's service life had increased from dozens of rounds to more than 400 rounds, with a plan to reach 1,000 rounds in the future. However, the Office of Naval Research did not fully confirm whether or not the 400 shots meant shots with full power charges from the railgun. The US Navy railgun was expected to fire at a rate of 6 rounds per minute with a service life of around 3,000 rounds. However, according to scientists, humanity is still limited by the development of technology, so it is not yet within its power to achieve such ambitious results. According to them, tens of thousands of hours of research and development in the field of material science are required before the ideal material can be found for the rails of this innovative gun. Projectile guidance is another key feature of the railgun, which is crucial for its combat use. It requires developing a reliable guidance package that allows the gun to fire at distance targets and hit incoming missiles. However, the development of such a package has been quite the headache. The complexity of manufacturing the package was confirmed by a naval request, which noted that the package should be limited to the mass, less than 4.4 pounds, diameter, less than 40 millimeters, and volume. 200 cubic centimeters of the projectile, while not affecting its center of gravity. Additionally, it must withstand a threshold acceleration of at least 20,000 g and a target acceleration of 40,000 g in all access points. Strong electromagnetic fields, E greater than 5,000, V over M, B greater than 2T, and surface temperatures greater than 1472 degrees Fahrenheit, 800 Celsius. Furthermore, the package must be able to operate in the presence of any plasma that may form in the bore or at the muzzle exit, as well as have a certain amount of radiation resistance due to exoatmospheric flight. Total threshold power consumption must be less than 8 watts, aiming for a target of 5 watts, and battery life of at least 5 minutes from initial startup. And this whole list assumes a projectile production cost of less than $1,000. To date, the US Office of Naval Research has recorded a maximum projectile velocity of Mach 6, or 4600 miles per hour, which is several times faster than a 155mm howitzer's maximum projectile velocity of 1260 miles per hour. But after 15 years of development and more than $500 million in budget funds, the US Department of Defense was forced to shift the Navy's attention to hypersonic missiles and lasers and the railgun project was shelved. This doesn't necessarily mean you and I will not see a railgun aboard one of the Zumwalt or even more advanced Navy ships, but it makes it clear that the fleet has other priorities now. And given the warm relations between the United States and China, which is also actively developing its own railgun, the President and Congress may very well change their minds very soon.
What do you think? Will scientists and the military manage to bring the railgun project to the table? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.